Yo, welcome back everybody to another video. So today I recently heard that Heroku is now getting rid of their free, free tier um, for their Postgres, their data, and their Redis plan um, starting November 28th. And somebody on YouTube asked me if I knew of any sort of good alternatives for uh, Heroku. And I've been using one that's fairly good. So if you want a uh, database in a backend that is uh, solid for uh, side projects or very, very small type of production apps, I would suggest that this is a very good solution to it. Um, firstly, I'm not affiliated with them whatsoever. I just think what they're doing is really cool and I wanted to show it to you guys. And that is called Back for App. So it's a low code backend to build modern apps. It stores relational data on the cloud and makes it accessible over REST, GraphQL with scalable open source backend. Um, and it's fairly easy to use once you get a hang of it. Um, at first it may seem a little intimidating because you have so many things available to you from the beginning for free. Uh, but in this little short series, I'll show you guys how to use it, how to get started with it, and hopefully th that'll convince you that this is a little bit better than Heroku from a free from a free tier standpoint. So let's go ahead and get started. So since this video is just an introduction into Back for App and how, in my opinion, this is better than the Heroku free tier, um, it's there's a lot of terminology that you'll have to learn on how to work with this, but it is very simple once you get the hang of it, and I'll do my very best to make it as simple as possible. So since uh, back for app does utilize something called parse if you've never heard of that don't worry we'll be working with it what we're going to be doing is we're going to create a simple free tier app and that app we're going to push some data into some basic nba player uh, data and then we're going to pull that data using parse so we'll push it using parse pull it using parse into our app into our react app and then we're going to display the data it's very simple uh, don't worry uh, it's not too complicated but uh, let me show you guys what uh but this is a little basic template app that I made. So when I register for it, I made a simple template app right here. It's called NBA API. There's really nothing inside of it, but if we click on plan usage, we're gonna see the free tier uh, usage plan that you have access to. So you have about 10 requests per second, uh, total requests about 25,000, uh, file storage of about a gig, and database storage of 250 megabytes. Now, in my opinion, that is pretty goddamn good for a free tier, especially. You know, you don't have to give your credit card, you just need to register with an email. You got a, uh, an, an, uh, a database with a back end up and running immediately. And if I click on dashboard, you can see the first thing we see right here is the database column. Now this column is basically where your database is going to be stored. This is your browser, so you can go between classes. You can consider a class as a table. Um, so your whole database has individual tables, and inside of those tables you have columns. So for example, this B4 vehicle, you have an object ID, updated at, created at, name, price, color, and uh, the ACL, which just means public, reader, write, enabled. So you can add to the database or you can delete from the database. Now we will be working with adding things into the database soon. Um, it is a little bit tricky in how to work with it in JavaScript, but I'll try to make it as simple as I possibly can. After that you have the index manager, this basically shows you the name, the indexes, and the fields, and whether they're unique or not. Um, after that you have blockchain, it's fairly new, I have absolutely no idea what blockchain, anything about blockchain at all, so I can't, I can't even teach about that at all. Um, after that you have the cloud code. So the next thing that I wanted to talk about is the cloud code function. Uh, we'll be working with this more in depth, but at a high level, this allows you to be able to um, create functions for Backfire specifically that you can do certain things with. So if you wanted to, uh, let's say, edit a user or delete a user from the database, uh, you can run a cloud code function to do that. If you wanted to display all results um, where there's a certain date period, you can do that in here and just uh, call this uh, function name inside of your app and then you get all the responses back. So it's a fairly really, it's a very, very useful thing. Um, after that you have jobs. I haven't really used jobs really ever, um, but they are there and logs. These are just your system, regular console logs and everything. So after that we have the API section. Now what this section allows you to do is number one, gives you tutorials on how to connect your app to back for app uh, to make requests to. And after that, you have the console. So as opposed to you know having to manually test things inside of your own um, inside of your own application, you can do it through here. You have the JavaScript option where you can make basic requests, and then when you press run, it would run it. And then you can see uh, right here they're making a new parse object called my class. And if I see right here, it's created right here my class. And then it made a new object with a 
new column, my field, and give it the value of hello world. So it's very basic stuff that you can do inside of there. After that, you have the API reference. This is something that's really, really neat. So if you want to see the documentation for your exact um, for your exact application that Back for App provides you, you have that all set right here. So you have your application key, your client key, JavaScript key, REST API key. You have how to create objects, deleting objects, understanding data types, your individual tables and how to connect to them and what kind of results you should get back. Um, your user API, so if you want to create users, verifying emails, requesting current user, uh, queries, errors, and a whole lot of awesome other awesome stuff. And after that, we have the app settings. So this is just general information about the apps. You have the app name, your collaborators, uh, what kind of parsed API you're running, the database type and version. And uh, after that, you have security and keys. These are the keys that you're going to be using to be able to connect your um, back for app application to your project. Um, so don't worry about how to connect this right now. In the next video, we'll be covering how to register for back for app, how to set up a basic application, and then we're going to connect it to a basic React app. So stay tuned for that, and I hope that uh, you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace. Thank you.